Okay, it is six o'clock and uh, we are convening as the Volusia Forever Advisory Committee to hold the first public listening session regarding uh, the reboot of the Volusia Forever program. We appreciate everyone being with us this evening. I'm Marian Connors, I'm chairing the committee and I will ask that the roll call of the committee members be reissued. Steve Crump. Here. Gerald Fieser. Here. John Gamble. Here. Jessica Gao. Here. Wanda Van Dam. Here. Mary Ann Connors. Here. Derek LaMontagne. Here. Derek Orberg. Here. Suzanne Shriver. Here. All are present, we have a quorum. Thank you. Our, our format this evening is that uh, there will be a video presentation presented. Uh, I hope that those who are at GoToWebinar can also view it. Uh, we will be seeing the same video with all of these sessions, after which we will open the floor for public comments and participation followed by comments from those who are in the webinar group. And we will be happy to hear everyone's new and improved ideas to, uh, to share with this important program. So with that, I will ask that we begin the video. Good evening and welcome to our Volusia Forever program. My name is Ginger Adair and I am the Environmental Management Director for Volusia County and I will be taking us through a series of slides about the existing Volusia Forever program to help us understand how we should move forward with the new program. We're going to talk mostly this evening about the existing Forever program, but I want to take one minute to talk about the 2020 referendum. Voters were asked in November of 2020 to approve a program that included an ad valorem tax of one fifth of a mil for 20 years. That is projected to raise $179 million over those 20 years. It permits bonding in an amount not to exceed $60 million. The purpose is to finance acquisition and improvement of environmentally sensitive water resource protection, forests and farmlands, and outdoor recreation lands. It requires full public disclosure through an annual audit. This referendum was approved by 75.6% of Volusia County voters, which is why we're here this evening to talk to the citizens about how the program will move forward. The County Council adopted a resolution numbered 2021-11 that established the Volusia Forever Advisory Committee. The purpose of that committee is to oversee the review of proposed acquisitions and make recommendations to the County Council to review applications to ensure that requests meet the objectives, the criteria, the procedures, and the guidelines of the program, to periodically review program procedures, guidelines, and criteria for acquiring property, to oversee the review of those proposed acquisitions and improvements for consistency with the intent and the goals of the program, assess the program priorities and recommend a ranking of properties, make recommendations regarding participation in federal, state, and district grant programs, review and or assess the land acquisition, water resource protection, forests and farmlands, and outdoor recreation needs of the county, and make recommendations on how Volusia Forever can address them and to recommend further evaluation of properties through resource assessments. Resolution 2021-11 establishes membership of the Forever Advisory Committee. Members serve two terms that expire on March 31st of odd numbered years. If any member fails to attend two meetings during any calendar year, the seat is deemed vacant. The committee shall conduct an annual goal setting workshop to outline its work program for the year and will make an annual report to the county council on accomplishments and review the annual program audit reports. The role of county staff. County staff are here to support the advisory committee to provide an eligibility evaluation report for all nominated properties 
to communicate with property owners, other acquisition partners, and regulatory agencies, to present committee recommendations to the county council and inform the committee members of county council actions, and to negotiate acquisition contracts. The land nomination and review process. The program shall accept nominations from any governmental entity, conservation organization, corporation, or individual for any land within Volusia County. The committee or the staff may also nominate lands. Lands shall be evaluated on a first come, first served basis. Staff may establish a nomination cycle and deadlines. Nominations shall be submitted on an application form not to exceed 10 pages. Staff will perform an initial review based on the established criteria, including a site visit. And staff will prepare a draft property evaluation report and provide it to the property owner or representative for review, and then to the committee for evaluation. Priorities for acquisition. In the current program, priorities are properties on the Water Management District five-year acquisition plan, completion of projects begun under previous acquisition programs, additions to existing conservation lands, properties that enhance corridors and connectivity, properties of significant size to achieve meaningful conservation objectives, and properties facing imminent loss to development. The Volusia Forever program has established site ranking criteria. There are 18 primary criteria that are grouped into six groups. The first group is proximity and connectivity. Second is furtherance of acquisition efforts. Third is water resources. Fourth, environmentally sensitive lands. Fifth is provision of resource-based recreation lands. And sixth is management requirements. There are also three enhancement criteria. To be eligible for acquisition, a site must meet 10 of the 18 primary criteria. To be eligible for a conservation easement, a site must meet five of the criteria. I'll go through each of the site ranking criteria by group. The first group is proximity and connectivity. The criteria are, is the property functionally adjacent to existing conservation land, either a conservation easement or in public ownership, or a Volusia Forever eligible property? Will the acquisition maintain the ecological link or habitat corridor between two or more otherwise unconnected existing conservation lands, either conservation easements or public ownership? The second group is furtherance of acquisition efforts. Those criteria are, will the acquisition further a project begun under previous or existing governmental land acquisition programs? And based upon a preliminary assessment, for example, partnership experience, property size, location, and features, is there a reasonable expectation of matching funds from other sources to assist in the acquisition? water resources. Does the property serve an important groundwater recharge function? Does the property contain or have frontage upon a water body, wetlands, or waterway? Does the property contain springs and or other unique geologic features? And does the property have the potential for water resource development, for example, potable water development? environmentally sensitive lands. The criteria are, is there the potential that acquisition of the property will protect or maintain populations of any federal or state listed species, including but not limited to endangered, threatened, or species of special concern, which may typically be expected to occur on the property? Does the property contain viable acreage of one or more scarce, unique, or other significant upland communities? And will the acquisition protect fragile coastal resources? Does the property provide resource-based recreation lands? And the criteria is, does the property offer the potential for the establishment or enhancement of resource-based public use opportunities, including greenways, blueways, and trails? Management. Is the size and location of the property appropriate for cost-effective management? 
does the property have a limited amount of exotic or invasive species? Is the pattern of existing and potential future land use of the area adjacent to the property compatible with typical land management practices? Is there appropriate access to the property? Is the percentage of water bodies or wetlands requiring restoration minimal? And is the percentage of uplands requiring restoration minimal? This is the enhancement criteria that are established. Does the property likely contain significant historical, archeological, and or cultural resources? Does the property have the potential for providing significant opportunities for education and or scientific research? Does the acquisition of the property substantially further the conservation goals and management objectives of the Volusia Forever Program. The committee review and prioritization process is as follows. At an open public meeting, the committee shall divide properties into two groups, properties eligible for further consideration and properties that are not eligible based on the established criteria. No less than twice each year, the committee will prioritize the eligible properties into two groups. Group A are those properties that receive the highest priority. They significantly further the goals of the program and may be eligible for matching funds or within the Volusia Forever project area. Group B properties are important but not the highest priority based on the evaluation criteria. Group A properties are forwarded to County Council for authorization to proceed with the acquisition process. County Council may move a property from one group to another, but may not add a property to the ranking group that has not first been determined eligible by the committee. Once the properties are ranked onto the Group A list, there's a final acquisition process. The Group A properties shall be pursued for acquisition by completing the following. A contract with a willing seller, a boundary survey, a title and encumbrance survey, written appraisals, which consist of one appraisal for properties that are valued between $100,000 and $500,000, and two for properties with values greater than $500,000. Also completed are environmental audits, either a phase one or phase two audit as necessary, a deed or an easement, approval by the county council, and then the real estate closing. This graphic depicts the process of Volusia Forever acquisition. At the top of the page, the Volusia Forever staff solicits willing sellers, that is those property owners who are interested in having Volusia Forever purchase their property for conservation. Next, the Volusia Forever Advisory Committee recommends lands for acquisition based on the established criteria. The County Council then approves or modifies this committee recommendations. The land acquisition staff negotiates purchases, and then the land management staff manages that land in perpetuity. Also included in the existing Volusia Forever program is the small lot acquisition program. The Volusia Forever resolutions authorize the acquisition of small lots. That program supplements the county's efforts in acquiring environmentally sensitive lands in antiquated subdivisions. The lots are small with limited or no physical access or infrastructure. The goal is to assemble contiguous small lots into ecologically significant tracts. For small lots, the acquisition procedures are modified. No survey, appraisal, or environmental assessment is required, and only a limited title search and an affidavit from the owner stating there are no known pollutants is required. Through this program, Volusia Forever has spent over $1.6 million since 2001 to acquire a total of 2,519 acres. One important portion of the Volusia Forever program is the land management set aside. In the program from 2000 to 2020, 10% of the appropriated funds of the program were set aside to ensure that there is adequate funding for public access, 
land management and improvements thereon of lands purchased under Volusia Forever, as well as the 1986 referendum and other lands purchased for conservation purposes. You will hear more about the land management set aside in the financing section of this presentation. Good evening, I'm Tim Bailey, Parks, Recreation and Culture Director. I'm responsible for the land management on the conservation lands. Responsible for management, enhancement and restoration of approximately 41,000 acres. Ecologically sensitive management focuses on restoration, conservation, education and research opportunities for the wise public utilization of natural lands. Land management activities. These include habitat maintenance and restoration, which includes prescribed fire, sustainable forestry, which promotes conservation and management practices, which are environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable, and which generate and maintain benefits for present and future generations. Plant and animal monitoring, which includes exotic species control, Jay Watch, and Rugel's Paw Paw Roundup. Recreation, public access, and education. These include hiking, biking, horseback riding, and primitive camping are allowed on most conservation properties. There are 46 miles of trails and five campsites. Hunting is allowed on the Lake George Forest and Wildlife Management Area and is administered by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission as part of a larger 35,380 acre wildlife management area. Interpretive trail signage, guided tours, educational programs, and Boy Scout projects. I am Ryan Osowski, Chief Financial Officer for Volusia County, and I'm here to go over some of the financial aspects of the Forever Program. Uh, first, I'd like to cover the revenue estimates and the current balances that are on hand from the current Volusia Forever program. Uh, for the new Volusia Forever uh, 2020 ballot elected program, uh, based off of current property values, we approximate that the 0.2 mills levied will collect $7.65 million for fiscal year 2022. Estimated revenues of approximately $179 million will be collected over the 20 years that this program will be in place. And that was based off of regression modeling on historical property values for the 20 years. There are several different ways that you could look at modeling property tax revenues, especially when you're forecasting over such a long period of time. However, this is a down the middle approach at the $179 million number. The current balances for the Forever 2000 program that are on hand by the county include a $726,711 reserve for acquisition and a $12.7 million reserve for land management. Next, I'd like to go over the land management set aside. Currently, approximately $1.2 million is spent each year for land management expenses from the Forever program. The funds that are potentially available to cover future land management expenditures include a set aside from the ad valorem tax, interest revenues, hunting leases and timber sales, and the Forever 2000 fund balance, as mentioned on the previous slide, the $12.7 million reserved for land management. A potential set aside of 10 to 15% has been discussed, and the amounts of the 10% and 15% set aside would be 765,000 for 10% or 1.1 million for 15%. Adding that to the interest, hunting leases, timber sales, and the fund balance would be your funding sources for land management. Now I'm gonna to turn to the land acquisition financing piece of the Forever Program. When the voters approved the Volusia Forever Program, a $60 million bonding authority was also approved. This $60 million bond would give the county immediate cash flow, but result in annual debt service of approximately $4.2 million per year for the 20 year life of the program at an estimated average interest rate of 3.4%. In addition to limited general obligation bonds, the county also has the potential for other credit mechanisms, such as revenue bonds. 
However, both limited general obligation and revenue bonds would be subject to the federal government's restrictions on tax-exempt debt. As an issuer of tax-exempt debt, we have to obey what the IRS views as a potential for overburdening the tax-exempt bond market. Basically, the IRS doesn't want you to issue debt until you actually need it and have a plan for spending it. It would not be advisable to take out debt just to have the money on hand to be able to say that we are ready to purchase. Instead, purchases should be lined up ahead of time and then the financing should be determined. This is because the county has the appropriate cash flow to make those purchases and then get the financing after the fact. The financing time frame is approximately three months depending on what type of financing and the amount of the financing. But in that meantime, between the purchase and the time that the financing is acquired, we have sufficient cash flow and the potential to borrow from the land management fund balance in order to make any purchases that are recommended to be made from this program. Thank you for listening to the financing portion of the Volusia Forever program. Thank you. Um, I'll now ask that anyone who uh, is here in the audience that wishes to participate uh, provide one of the yellow slips that are in the back of the room, Oops, blue slips, I'm sorry, blue slips to uh, Sarah. And uh, please, uh, she will announce you and you will come up and offer your commentary. And again, we'll then go to the webinar uh, participants for their commentary. Michael Ploys. All right, good evening. Hi, Michael. How's everyone doing tonight? Great. So, um, my name is Michael Ploys. I'm the city manager here in DeLand, and I'm actually here in that capacity. Uh, first, I just want to uh, thank you on behalf of the city of DeLand for your service on the Volusia Forever uh, Committee. It's a very important job, you know, and we thank you for your time and allowing for uh, public participation tonight. Uh, over the past 20 years, uh, Volusia Forever has enabled us to preserve 38,000 acres of environmentally sensitive water resource and outdoor recreation lands. However, most of those purchases were made within the Volusia Conservation Corridor running through the center of the county, the so-called uh, Map A lands. It is our hope that with the program being overwhelmingly renewed by Volusia residents, you'll strongly consider parcels outside the conservation corridor, specifically parcels in and around cities that meet acquisition goals, goals outlined in resolution 2020-80. We believe that there are still many parcels in and around the land and indeed other cities that are worthy of consideration. Being open to consideration of these lands will give us a chance to preserve lands that enjoy close access for our residents and can serve to showcase the importance of the program and why voters elected to continue it. It would also have the added benefit of helping to break up development patterns in a county that has seen a lot of growth in recent years. Lastly, it opens the opportunity to partner with cities to aid in the management and care for these lands. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Bill Riggle. Well, I uh, I had a question, and uh, most of it's been answered by your film. I'm a land broker, have been for many years. I'm kind of semi-retired now, but I do represent some people that have interest possibly in uh, conservation easements. Uh, families, uh, some people want to stay on the farm. Others have no interest in it. So, you know, the conservation program from my previous experience the last 20 years from 2000 on <clears throat> would possibly work so my question was i was going to get into uh, the actual uh, what can you say the, the criteria that you're going to set for your easement conservation easements is there going to be a publication because i had two people ask me about it uh, interested in it landowners along the river substantial properties um, that would like to know a little more about the program. And I know this is early for you all, you're just starting back up. And uh, But my question is, uh, will there be a, uh, 
outline or something regarding the conservation ease. And I know in the old program, previous program, there was a uh, you know, printout to jab because I was involved in a couple of those uh, conservation uh, here in Volusia. Uh, so that's my question, I guess now you did cover it pretty well with your film, um, but will there be like, um, printouts or stuff that you know we can use as a guideline when we talk to people about that program in particular conservation easements so let me say this is this is to hear public interest and what i'm understanding from you is is that you have you may be representing some properties with an interest in this um, i would suggest you have them look at the criteria as they exist and if you see some gaps, um, please voice your interests and concerns. Uh, this is the forum to do that. Well, again, your uh, presentation here did give me quite a bit. I can go back to these property owners and discuss, so, okay. Okay, this is the time and this is the process, so we hope you'll participate. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Doug Weaver. Doug Weaver, 1620 Robert Burns. As I said the first of the week, still a member of the Florida Bar. Um, I wish I had a nice little presentation like that. Y'all did a good job. I would suggest that the organizational and operational framework of the Lucia Forever program uh, continue as it now exists. We established a good program with the help of the public the council, the advisory committee, and the staff. Uh, all parties, this upcoming program need to get familiar with the process as, as it is implemented. And, you know, this is a pretty serious educational process. Technical changes will be required uh, to the operating resolutions, uh, but substantive changes uh, should be implemented after you all have gained some experience. And, you know, I'm really talking about a couple of cycles, one or two cycles. Uh, we had to go through that. Uh, we tweaked the uh, resolutions, amended them. Uh, some of our previous uh, board members may recall that. <clears throat> uh, I don't expect it to be a mirror image program. Uh, just like what the city manager just said. There's probably opportunities there for more involvement with the cities. We had some, uh, but I think there's, there's more opportunities there. Um, one important foundational element, it's kind of a big deal, but a small deal at the same time, is the willing seller element of this. We don't really in, involve ourselves with a willing, a person, a property owner, until they've signed a little sheet like a one-liner that says i'm willing to participate you're not signing a contract i'm just willing to participate and it's so important to start off with these property owners on the right foot you know uh, we've had cases where uh, sometimes you you have to walk away from a potential deal but guess what sometimes you you come back and in several years, so it's it's always important to uh, to have a good relationship with these willing sellers, and this is this has worked very very well. But it's a foundational element. <clears throat> Shift gears a little bit. At present, the the set aside for land management is 10%, and that's been true for 20 years. Uh, last summer, it was either last spring or last summer, uh, the county council. Uh, by consensus, in my judgment, uh, suggested increasing this to 15%. Uh, Please finish your okay. thought. Large scale land management is expensive. Manpower, equipment, uh, being ready to fight wildfires, being able to get on the, uh, on the property as soon as possible. 
So uh, they didn't take a formal vote, but I think there may be real interest in increasing that to 15% uh, for this this new program. So that's all I had. Thank, Thank you, you so much. David Griffiths. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, as a retired University of Florida IFAS Volusia County Extension Director, uh, I visited the properties from 2000 to 2016 and walked the sites. So I am very appreciative of the voters of this county for approving this. And I congratulate each of you for being on this committee, having been on the other side for a while, many times for writing reports. I understand what you'll be going through, so I commend you for that. And I also so appreciate the staff for the great presentation. Uh, I was going to mention the small lot acquisition. Uh, I did not think that would be discussed, but I saw that it was discussed. And that is a very important part of this program, that those small lots, yes, many of them are out in the wetlands and they're attached or connected to other properties that we've purchased at a very cheap rate. So. Please remember that it's not always the large projects. There could be some small projects out there as well. Uh, but again, thank you very much for serving. You appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy Anderson. Good evening. And Again, just like Dave said, thanks to all of you for serving and um, certainly Madam Chairwoman for your leadership. Um, I am a professor at Stetson University and I'm also the chair of the Volusia Soil and Water Conservation District. And the idea or thought that I wanted to just sort of add to the table here is, and I'm sure you all are already very aware of it because I learned it from Steve Crump, <laughs> is is that we really need to make sure that we um, amplify and maximize the dollars that we have in the Volusia Forever program by partnering with other agencies like the, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, um, St. John's, DEP, um, and even the private land trust organizations like North Florida Land Trust. All of those need to be partners with us in reviewing you know, potential potential properties that come to you. It might be that for Lucia Forever is, you know, the one and only program that funds these. It could be that some of those other programs are better fits. And so one of the things that we're hoping to do in the Soil and Water Conservation District is actually um, create sort of a clearinghouse of all of these different programs that are available at the federal, state, local, and private levels. So when landowners are interested in this, we can also be a resource to help guide them towards perhaps the best program. And then, and then once they're in the program, they can, they can figure out, you know, with the experts in that program, how they want to proceed. But, but I would just encourage you all to, um, to stay in touch with us and with those other programs to, to maximize those dollars. And then the other um, idea I wanted to share was that I remember hearing earlier that farmland trust was, um, potentially going to be part of the program, but I didn't see much about it in the video, well, anything about it in the video. So I was just wondering if that was still part of it, because I do think that this is an important part of land preservation in our county, not just the ecological preserves, but the food production capacity of this county. Food security is, is critical as we move into um, larger and larger populations, and climate instability, and I think preserving the lands that we have in this county that are producing food for us is, is critical. And if we can keep that as a part of this program or add that as a part of this program, that would be really ideal. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. That is all we have in person. If anyone online would like to speak, please raise your hand as part of the GoToWebinar function. We have Patty Crutchen back. If you unmute yourself. Patty, you're able to speak. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hi there. 
excellent presentation. Um, will the presentation be, I'd like to recommend the presentation be available on the website. Um, gentleman who spoke earlier about sharing it with people who are interested, that was a good comment. Um, I am new to Volusia County and I'm unfamiliar with your past protocols. Um, so I'd like to know if the updates on the lands that are being considered would be available on your website. And the speaker who just spoke, um, I'd like to echo her comment that um, the committee communicate regularly with other programs. You just never know what they have out there. I've done a lot of work with water management districts and um, it's uh, nice to partner with other agencies to maximize dollars. That's all I have. Thank you. And just where everyone is aware, the presentation is available online as of today. There is also a public comment card as well that can be submitted by email online. Is there anyone else online that would like to speak? Please raise your hand. Madam Chair, we do not have anyone else. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess I would like to uh, follow up on the question that, that's come up a couple of times now. So I will ask the staff, is, is there a forum or a process for, for the discussion of common interests in um, acquisition of properties? Um, I know we partner with the Water Management District. Um, but there are other, are other partnering agencies, so I'm wondering in, in what context um, things come together. And, and I'll just go with past experience, if, if you can offer any, any, and we're looking to past experience. <laughs> so, Doug, if you can help, it, it, it would just be appreciated. Uh, Mr. Weaver. I, I'm calling him up. Um, it's like ringing an old fire bell, but well, I want to know who the new Doug is. <laughs> All right, uh, partnerships. Yeah. How do they come about? Through a lot of hard work. Through a lot of hard work. Um, I started my career in in Tallahassee as the first staff director of the House Agriculture Committee. So. You know, I didn't mind going to Tallahassee and shaking the trees, all right? Um, I may have told you all I've been around so long. My first office was in uh, in the old Capitol, so now I can take you to where my office was in the old Capitol. So it's a museum. It's now a museum. So, but we, I'm, I'm a big fan of personal relationships, and we made trips to Tallahassee. Sometimes we'd, we were invited to go with the council to lobby uh, for Florida Forever. Other times we'd go to DP, DEP. I wanted the state, whether it's DEP, uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Department of Agriculture, some of the main players at the state, I wanted them to know us personally and that we were ready, willing, and able to partner with them. And we had serious money to put on the table. We weren't just going to your hat in hand. We want a real partnership, and I think it made a difference. Uh, sometimes, excuse me, sometimes uh, uh, those seeds would bear fruit, sometimes they wouldn't. But you got to try, and you continue to try, because you'll never know when the partnership comes up. Uh, the Water Management District just turned out to be our our best uh, partner. Cities, we did, uh, we did uh, partnerships with several cities. Um, we did some with the federal government. Typically, there's a long lead time if you're talking about Natural Resource uh, Conservation Services, pretty long lead time there. But you try not to uh, leave any stone unturned. Uh, the uh, Conservation agencies like Trust for Public Land, they're certainly welcome to participate in this program as they did before. Uh, the Nature Conservancy, but sometimes you'll find 
they have other priorities. And I think it's important to point out when you're talking about these nonprofits, all they have, you know, this county may be their priority, it may not be. But you establish relationships. I mean, I made, I made some good friendships with those agencies and they helped me. They helped. They had, uh, you know, we, we could call, they had offices in Tallahassee. We could check with them what's going on. Very important. Uh, but typically those agencies, <clears throat> they're trying to find partners just like us. Uh, but but you should you should establish relations that used to be in this state something called American Farmland Trust. I don't think they're in the state anymore. They do conservation easements. And to Bill's comment about conservation easements, you know, once we get to uh, negotiating on a conservation easement with a landowner, they're they're pretty well tailored individually. Uh, you can talk to a landowner about what it amounts to, what it is, and we do. And on the big parcels, we usually offer that. And some landowners interest, some not. But uh, uh, it's it's part of the uh, toolbox in, in uh, land acquisition. Okay. Uh, we did only about $40 million of partnership, so I think it worked. But there's a lot of shoe leather and blood, sweat, and tears. Any questions? That helps. It does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think... Madam um, Chairwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, over here. Oops. <laughs> Hi. Ginger Adair, Environmental Management Director. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that we, we are already working on those relationships. We um, have had multiple conversations with the Water Management District about their ongoing priorities. Um, we've met with the land trusts. And so those are our partnerships that we will work on starting. You know, we started when the uh, ballot initiative was, was out there and, and we continue to do that. So um, there certainly is an opportunity to engage, you know, with folks like Soil and Water and with the cities as we move forward. Ginger, let me ask, are there, I mean, we have some maps that, that visualize some goals in terms of the county. Do these other agencies or entities have comparable maps? Some some do and, and some don't. So the DEP has priority acquisition areas and the Volusia Conservation Corridor we actually talked about earlier this week, um, they have a, a five-year plan uh, and it identifies what their land acquisition priorities are. So that's where a lot of the state money gets funneled through. The Water Management District at the moment um, is focused on uh, project specific acquisitions primarily. So things that are adjacent to something they already own or, or projects that have a, a water quality benefit because that's their highest priority right now. Um, so yes, in some cases, definitely at the DEP level, there are um, acquisition priority maps available. Okay, thank you. And in, in response to the question about the inclusion of farmlands, um, I believe that was an addition in this year's... Um, yes, ma'am. The, the ballot initiative um, this year was uh, changed from the prior program to add the words forests and farmlands to the list of acquisition priorities. Okay, so I hope that that responds to your question. It is new wording, and so it, it will um, involve new initiatives because of that. Any members of the committee would care to comment this evening? Okay. Derek? Uh, is that just on anything? Is this? Well, I think. Or on what we were just. I mean, yeah, or, based on the speakers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to know. I know, um, I think Mr. Rickle brought up um, there is this PowerPoint and I guess the video available online, but if we have like a PDF or some sort of flyer that we can hand to potential landowners who are looking for an easement, um, I, that I would ask maybe if staff can point to that or, or create kind of the breakdown of you know program in like a page so people could see it without having to watch a video it's a very nice video presentation but that's sometimes not the best format I guess and 
Um, yeah, I just, I guess also want to ask maybe the staff uh, uh, if, if it really would be uh, appropriate for us to be calling people in Tallahassee. I mean, I'm happy to do so. I, I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I don't want to like, you know, step on feet or anything. And I, I do want to do my part to make sure we're, we're finding these partnerships. Uh, I just want to make sure that is appropriate, I guess, for the committee and not for staff. Um, I just wanted kind of a, should I be doing that or, or not kind of answer. I think we should um, raise the question and we will take, ultimately we'll take our direction from County Council. I see. And there is some language in the resolution that created or reinstated the uh, committee that addresses that. So I'm just gonna look for it real quick. Madam Chair, we also have one more person online indicating they'd like to speak. Susie Peace, uh, you are unmuted on my end. Yes, uh, and I wanted to thank all of you for serving and Doug Weaver for his wonderful uh, term on the Volusia Forever board before and his work with the county and the wonderful staff we have in Volusia County. Um, I really think it's not a very smart idea for to offer landowners uh, to ask them if they'd like to sell their property because I think they're going to raise their property um, values as soon as you do that. I think it should be done in a more subtle way. I think that's what the last Volusia board, Volusia River board did. And so I'm just um, putting that in. Uh, but I thought also that, that the 15% for land management had already been approved. Anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Okay. We also have Melissa Lammers. Good Melissa. evening. Good evening. I'd like to thank the Volusia Forever Advisory Board as well for their voluntary service to our community in something that is so important and has been entrusted to them. I'm a member of the Echo Volusia Forever Alliance, and I would just like to formally enter into the record the um, uh, white paper, the position paper that we have pre previously sent to all of the Volusia Forever Advisory Board members. And um, Ms. Presley, I'll also be emailing you a copy of that now. And again, I thank you so very much. Many of the topics that came up tonight, we have um, made some suggestions in our position paper. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Well, we thank you this session. Um, listening sessions will be repeated on successive Wednesdays now. Um, in different locations, anyone who is interested in either being present or listening online, of course, uh, there will be information uh, in, on the county website in terms of how to do that and how to stay involved and current on this process. Um, if there is no further business. Oh, Jessica? I'm I didn't sorry. know if Ginger wanted to comment on the resolution language. I, I um, found the language in the resolution. So this is in resolution 21-11 that uh, establishes or reestablishes the committee. And uh, on page five of five, it says members of the committee are prohibited from representing the Blue Shift Forever program or county interests to any public or private land acquisition or preservation support entity including the St. John's River Water Management District, the state of Florida, and the United States of America, unless otherwise directed by the county council or county manager or the designee. Okay, if there's, if there's no further comment or question, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Thank you for joining us this evening.